Hello, everybody. Welcome to the One Nation of Gamers Summer Circuit EU Qualifier number six. I'm Osmo, joined by Chucky. Chucky, I feel like I've asked you this already today, but how are you doing today? Yeah, we had a bit of an issue, and we're, we already said all this stuff. But I'm doing. I'm still doing great, TJ. Uh, how about you? I'm I'm fantastic, man. I am looking forward to some really exciting Hearthstone action. This is the continuation of EU Qualifier number six. So basically, uh, the top four players from the open bracket that was played out yesterday: uh, Realistic, uh, Irony, Oskaka, and LBY. S. Um, and these guys made it all the way through the, the open bracket with some uh, interesting decks. It's been, I think, about a couple weeks since the last ONOG broadcast. And uh, since then, um, it's been quite a big meta shift. And I know, Chucky, earlier we were talking about this uh, amongst ourselves about the meta shift and how it seems to change on its own. Uh, we're seeing a lot of Shaman and Paladin lately. What do you attribute that to, if anything? Yeah, it is pretty interesting how the meta can kind of just change on its own. Blizzard doesn't even have to release new cards. Uh, just kind of like a time thing, I guess. The meta sort of shifts, and we've been seeing a lot more of a, a kind of this new Mech Shaman deck. More aggressive. They've been cutting, like, everything past five drops. Fire Elementals are out of the deck. Playing Double Doom Hammer to uh, increase the consistency of drawing that. Try and burn your opponent out. And then the Aggro Paladin deck, which some people have even considered stronger than Aggro Hunter... Uh, just another really powerful deck at going face, uh, killing greedy decks off and stuff. Divine Favor really punishes some of those decks. So, those are kind of the two new up-and-coming decks, and we're, we're really reaching the, the tail end of the meta, because the new cards are coming out really soon. So, there's basically, you know, a lot of room for experimentation, kind of ironic how that works now that it's like, as soon as you come up with new decks, within a few weeks, they're going to be obsolete but hey you might as well because nothing better to do for now while we wait exactly that makes for some interesting games because people put things in their deck that they wouldn't uh, otherwise have done but uh, we're starting to get close to the end of the uh, summer circuit here uh, PAX is about three weeks away and uh, that means that we are getting close to uh, rounding out the lineup that's going to be competing at that grand finals <clears throat> so what's on the line for these players today it's a $250 uh, prize pool as well as those uh, coveted Geico points, and of course, some World Championship points that are on the line. We only have, I think, three qualifiers left for, uh, or two qualifiers left for EU, and three qualifiers left for uh, NA. Um, and then, again, like I said, packs in three weeks. So if you guys want more information about the tournament, you can head to geico.onog.gg. If you want to sign up for the upcoming qualifiers, I think NA is uh, even tomorrow, if I'm if I'm not correct. Uh, yeah, it's tomorrow. So you can head to Liquid Hearth. Uh, dot com and on the right side of the page under upcoming events you can sign up for the uh, upcoming open tournaments uh, to have your shot at competing in the future tournaments uh, these broadcasts as well as uh, having your chance to go to PAX and compete for twenty thousand dollars but uh, first match of the day is going to be realistic from team next please uh, versus irony who's actually a Korean player yeah pretty you know these these Eastern players from like Korea and and China and those regions, they've they've done pretty well in open events, and they they play on the North American and European servers. Uh, just buy extra cards on there, grind out these open events, and they do really well on those. I know that a lot of players considered kind of the Asian scenes to be a little weaker a few months ago, but they've really been kind of just grinding out the game, trying out everything they can. Uh, even if it means kind of copying decks from the other scene, you know, there's really no shame in, in net decking and card games. So they, they've they been playing the most powerful decks, playing them a lot, and taking home a lot of these open events. Yeah, I already said he grinded Arena in, on EU for two months to have enough cards to start playing in tournaments uh, over in the EU scene. So um, Realistic is going to be playing the Hunter this game. Irony is going to be on... The Patient Warrior, these are two decks that we've come to expect in almost uh, every single Conquest lineup in some form or another. Yeah, Patron Warrior especially is just a deck that almost everyone brings. It is There is some merit in not bringing it if you kind of consider the fact that if everyone's bringing something, then clearly the next step forward is to bring the counter to that something. So if you expect everyone to be countering Patron Warrior, maybe you can just not bring Patron Warrior. But that is not the case for Irony, and especially I have noticed that 
almost all the Korean players have favored bringing the Patron Warrior deck in their lineups. Well, the players still consider it to be the strongest deck currently. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meta, even its worst matchups, you still have a chance to just blow up in the game um, yeah. and and have a chance to win. So, uh, unfortunately, realistic gets the uh, Leoc, which was probably the absolute worst case scenario for him. Yeah, he he really would have liked to see Huffer there, and I wouldn't have even surprised if the Huffer had to trade into that Frothing Berserker because mm. at the moment. It looks like Irony might just run away with this game. Like, I wouldn't even be surprised to see him play Grim Patron this turn. Uh, I guess he could hold back on that and go for like Armor Smith and Acolyte. But he can get a really powerful Frothing Berserker hitting the face multiple times. Uh, just keep Realistic board clear and force him to use some damage spells on his minions. So he's, he will go with that Grim Patron play. And what comes out of the Shredder is a pretty big deal. Yeah, we'll see. Pagel! Oh, that is so bad. That is one of the, the worst results because he can't kill off all of the minions that Irony has produced. I'm actually surprised that Irony went for that trade. Seven damage is... it's a lot. Yeah, that's a little bit interesting, especially since uh, hunters usually have multiple ways to deal with three damage uh, mm -hmm. from hand. And we could see that Realistic has... Three potentially four answers to the Frothing Berserker. I mean, I guess he'd probably use his whole turn just to clear that off, and you still have to worry about the patrons in that case. But um, yeah, I, the fifty percent chance for your opponent to draw a card doesn't seem to be worth right. for going seven damage to the face. I, I think I could have seen that trade if if Realistic was going into six mana and had the potential to abusive Sergeant the Nat Pagel, but without that really as an option. I mean, it feels like it was more of a a safe trade where I see this a lot in games, and even with just, like, professional players, people will, will trade because it's, you know, a nice trade, and then you ask them, okay, what were you playing around, and they're like, I don't know, I it was just a good trade. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's really, it's really something that neither of these players have really taken too much time this game. Uh nobody's really roped or anything yet, but it is one of those things you can take your time and consider. And I mean, obviously, the one example a lot of people would go to of, of someone that would do that is someone like Life Coach, where those are the kind of things he is considering when he's roping those turns. So something yep. that could possibly be improved is if, if you're going to make a play, at least be able to 100% to justify why you did it. Yeah. Uh, it still seems like Irony is going to be in a pretty commanding position. Uh, he's got an armor smith hiding behind an unstable ghoul, and there's not a silence in sight for realistic. So even if he manages to push through this, it's going to be tough for him to get through the armor before Irony can piece together enough damage for uh, to win the game. Yeah, if I had to guess what Irony would say about like why he made that trade, I would think that kind of his opinion on the board state was, okay, I'm in such a commanding lead that I don't need this 7 damage, uh, because Hunter is one of those decks that you can literally just grind out, especially as a warrior, where they will get into an unwinnable position. Regardless of what their health total's at, he was never going to be able to piece enough damage together to kill Irony. So just denying mm -hmm. them a cards denied him more options of, of removing those patrons. Yeah, uh, that's definitely true. And Irony is going to take uh, game number one here. And realistic, just whiffed with the Hunter right off the bat, but... Um, it seems like a lot of players, especially in these opens, they just open with Hunter and keep queuing it until they find a win. <laughs> and It looks like that's exactly what Realistic is going to do. Yeah, we actually see a little bit more into his Hunter deck here. It does have those Savannah High means, so more of a hybrid Hunter. And Irony, I would have to guess, based on the Houndmaster, is probably playing a bit slower of a Hunter uh, mm -hmm. without those charge minions like Wolf Rider, which we saw two of from Realistic. So... Maybe a little less uh, punch in the late game, but more more bulky units in the mid game, which isn't really what you want in the Hunter Mirror. If you can get off a nice Houndmaster, that is a pretty big deal. Uh, but we even see him keep Unleash the Hounds going first, which kind of illustrates the fact that he thinks he's going to be behind uh, in the mid game. Yeah, and a lot of times if you're playing mid-range Hunter, that's what happens because yeah. it's... Uh... 
you if you're going uh, first, then you don't hit a one drop usually, um, unless you hit a, like a web spinner as you're in your opening hand. Then you usually are going to be playing from behind because if you're playing a faster hunter, they're more likely to hit a one drop, and so more likely to have initiative on the board. Yeah, this doesn't look like it's a very uh, early game based uh, hybrid hunter though, which is a good good news for irony, which basically means the only thing the realistic has on him is the fact that he's playing chargers. Um, and Irony is playing maybe more taunt based stuff. Dr. Boom's obviously not going to be very great in the mirror, but the Archangelums, the Wolf Riders, they only really matter if you get ahead in the early game, and right now Irony is actually quite far ahead. Yeah, and Realistic's just going to have to coin out a Paladin Shredder here and hopefully there, and hope that there's no way for uh, Irony to deal with it. Yeah, like a, a freezing trap here would just be crippling for him. But looks like Irony is just going to roll for an ammo pain, see what comes out. This is a pretty nice trade here with the Scientist because it protects the Misha, which is a pretty big deal. Ooh. <laughs> kind of unfortunate that yeah. the Patient Assassin popped out. Yeah, that's... That Treader ended up being really valuable because it's going to trade for the uh, Misha also now mm -hmm. with the Patient Assassin popping up. So yeah. I guess realistic getting a little bit of vengeance. Uh, last game he had the Pagel pop out of the Shredder when he needed something to contest. In this game he gets the Patient Assassin. So Yeah, but he's still a little behind. I mean, the Shredder is going to be awkward for Irony to move, but if he can curve out, and it lo looks like that was an Eagle Horn bow. Yeah. And Irony has such a strong health lead. Uh, he can push through 9 damage this turn, already setting realistic to half health if he wants. He could opt to trade instead, but honestly, I would prefer he go face. Of course you would. Well, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the explanation behind that being that when you attack in your opponent's piloted shredder, you're essentially giving the next minion that pops out charge. You're giving them two attacks, and it's already inefficient to trade a piloted shredder into a knife juggler. That's a trade you yourself would want to make. So, you were kind of mentioning earlier that it seems like the meta is favoring going face a lot, and mm -hmm. one of the major reasons for that is, just in general, Hearthstone favors going face a lot. Because if you can force your opponent to be the one to make the trades, you're always ahead. And so, you're just getting free damage, which is especially relevant in uh, Hunter Mirrors. Yeah, a lot of times the hunter player that's that has to play defensive the whole game is the hunter player that finds himself uh, at a big health disadvantage, and then you just have so much damage to push through with chargers and with direct damage. And Iron actually gets King Crush off of the web spinner, so I don't think that'll be too relevant. But if the game makes it that far, I suppose that would definitely end it. Um, does just throw out a freezing trap to contest the the shredder, and I mean I think that's going to be pretty hard for realistic to really get through. If he gets a Misha here, that'd be nice. Uh, a Huffer would also be okay. Okay, so I, I would like to see him just go face. He does kill off the Hound, which denies a kill command, so that's kind of important. I guess he would have died, so that works out nicely, but also at the same time, if you don't go face enough, really, how do you win? Uh, you said King Crush wasn't going to matter. But he's got exactly the <laughs> next turn if the board is cleared with King Crush and a weapon. So, uh, I'd be a little over lethal, TJ. Sorry to kill off your dreams. What? What? No. And, and I mean, he has the King Crush damage from Kill Command Quick Shot. No, if the if he completely clears the board. Yeah. That. Oh, I guess King Crush does only do eight. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. You want to see him get crushed, don't you? I do. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it would be relevant because of Lothab. <laughs> yep. Here we go. We are going to see it. It's going to happen, TJ. King Crush is going to hit the board. Mm-hmm. Yep. He, he needed exactly that King Crush <laughs> to win this turn. It's too bad that we can't... Uh, neither of these players have camps. It's too bad that we can't see their reactions because... Yeah. That's, uh... That's always a doozy uh, when King Crush comes from the web spinner and it's used to uh, um, win. 
That is that is one more tally in the great Blizzard book of King Crush kills. It's pretty funny. They actually do have statistics like that. Uh, they have completely kind of useless stats like that. Like, how many people have died to a King Crush attack? And now that number is plus one. One more. And uh, so Irony takes a quick 2-0 lead here. Um... Mm -hmm. In the series, so he's only he has three opportunities now just to find a win with Warlock, and it looks like it is going to be uh, well Handlock for now, but it could be yeah, Malilock it could be or, or or Dragon Handlock. I, I don't know if you you saw me play in the Root Tourney last week. Brought out my nice Dragon Handlock deck. How did that work out for you? I, I got second place as expected. Uh, <laughs> as expected, that's what it's come to nowadays. Yeah, it was a winner-take-all tournament, so I walked home with zero dollars and zero cents. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was fun. I played I played completely trolley decks with as many 8-8s as I could fit, so I played Dragon Handlock as greedy as possible, and I played Control Warrior as greedy as possible, and I played Fell Reaver Hunter as greedy as possible. And it worked out quite nicely. I enjoyed the tournament. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's too bad you worked hard to get second place and ended up getting nothing for your for your efforts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it does look like just traditional handlock at the moment. But again, it could be a little bit... Uh, a little uh, surprised. Uh, yeah. He went with a Glaive Zooka and a face attack over a knife juggler. I mean, the knife juggler does die to dark bomb, so maybe he thinks like this will bait out the dark bomb. So maybe that's like his logic here is okay. My opponent can't afford to keep taking three from my Lepernome, so he'll just dark bomb this. And it worked out really well, especially because he drew a one drop off the top, but mm -hmm. it feels like he could have also just played the juggler on two. And uh, even if your opponent dark bombs the juggler, you get to retain your Lepernome. Yeah. But it did work out kind of nicely for him. Irony is going to make a 4-6 Twilight Drake, and I think, I mean, at that point, it's pretty evident this is uh, Handlock. This is a pretty important juggle. And he got it. Wow. So basically it means he gets to save this weapon charge, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, he could hear power to put Irony down to 15. The major danger in doing that is if Irony has, like, Hellfire, it sets him exactly to 10. And that means he can play free Molten Giants and clear the board. And then Realistic isn't in a, a position to deal 10 ever. So I really like this Freezing Trap here. Uh, it feels like you're kind of hedging your bet against the worst-case scenario. Just so happens Irony didn't have either of those cards, but he did top deck a Molten, so... It's a situation that could have happened, and now Realistic's in a much better position to go all-face. Yeah, and he played around the potential for him to just completely get locked out of the game, um, which is uh, it's a pretty Oof. smart play. Oof. Is that it? That is it. That's it. Wow. <laughs> or is he, he one-off? No, he didn't even need the juggle. He got it. Yeah. He didn't even need the juggle to face. He just, the juggle's he just... irrelevant. He just needed the huffer. Well, it was either a uh, Leoc and Juggle of the Face or a Huffer, so it was yeah. it was actually 50-50 to win that game off the Animal Companion top deck. Yeah. Well, that was probably going to be the roughest matchup for Irony anyway, so uh, Realistic is going to put himself on the board at least uh, in this matchup. So we're going to go into a uh, game number four. Realistic still has Druid and Shaman left. Now, both of these decks can realistically take down, um, take down Warlock. Good one, TJ. Realistically. Ha. <laughs> well, it looks like it is going to be that that kind of mech shaman. It could be the newer list, could be kind of the, the old list. Uh, we'll have to kind of wait to see some of the more telling cards like Leroy Jenkins or Fire Elemental. Uh, or the old list actually ran like Dr. Boom and Ragnaros, so some really heavy hitters. Mm -hmm. But this one does at least have those Fire Guard Destroyers, which are pretty huge units in the mid-game. Uh, with basically their worst case being you roll 7 and it gets big game hunter Other than that, Handlock just has nothing going for him to remove that card. Yeah, and Fire Guard Destroyers are really great in the faster 
version of the deck because you don't ruin your curve as much from the overload. A lot of times what happens is in the slower the slower mech shaman or even like mid-range shaman is you want to like curve your four mana into a five mana play. Yeah. Specifically um, like Fell Reaver. Yeah, exactly. Uh but with the faster one, usually you'll you just want as much power on the board as possible immediately and you're not too worried because you have a lot of cheap burn spells and and uh like cheap strong minions that You'll be able to find a play even with the one overload. So, yeah, Fireguard Destroyer works best when you uh, kind of go heavy on your four mana slot. That way, when you play it on four, then on five you can play another four drop, and it works especially well in decks where you don't have too many like key turns. So, this Max Shaman deck's pretty flexible in the plays it can make. You don't necessarily. Uh, a lot of these decks don't even play Fire Elemental anymore, but one of the biggest concerns used to be uh, I don't want to lock myself out of Fire Elemental on turn 6, but that's not really uh, a big deal at all for these decks. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, he's not really hitting his early curve too much here. Um, Earthshock is great for dealing yeah. with Twilight Drakes, but uh, having those cheap burn spells in your hand early on against Handlock usually isn't that big of a deal. Um... Finds a Mech Warper, but I think this is just a Fire Guard Destroyer turn. Yeah, and you can just hold back on the weapon. You probably want to use it to clear minions anyway. So this is the nightmare for him until he sees that there's no big game hunter. Uh, and then it's actually just completely optimal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he'll definitely get value off of this Power Mace, which is nice that he drew that Mech Warper. Still looking for a bit more, but he does have... Quite a bit of burn in his hand, and he has an Earth Shock to get through taunts. So, yeah, Lightning Bolts, though, um, I don't know. They they're they, not they, the best. Yeah, three damage, four damage of spell power really just isn't oh, that much. Baby, curving the Fire Guard Destroyer into the Fire Guard Destroyer. Yeah, I would say you play that. You go face, and you probably hold on to that weapon. Uh, he's going to go for the Mech Warper just so he can get the value. Um, this works out nicely because he does want to kill off that 2-1. Uh, I don't think it was a huge deal. It kind of helped against like Shadow Flame against Defender of Argus, but looks like it's going to be Belcher, and now we're getting dangerously close to Irony dying. There's 13 potential damage right now, but Doom oh. Hammer is going to up that significantly. Mm-hmm. However, I mean, realistic has to be really, yeah, yeah. I, I like not using the Earth Shock. Like, you could push for a lot of damage, but you have to be very wary about uh, Irony having stuff like, like what he has. He has two Moltens, he has a Taunter, he has the Heal Bot. He could very easily stabilize if you kind of put him at a bad health total for you. Oh, and an Ooze oh, off the top! That's a ridiculous draw. Yeah, that's so sick. Now well, that reduces the potential damage by a lot, because now it makes yeah. Rockbinder not a draw for, like, guaranteed lethal anymore, and right. it takes away that four damage every single turn. Yep, suddenly, and I mean, from our position, there was no Rockbinder, but for Irony, it it basically puts us into a much more calculatable game for him. Uh, the board state that was out there, he would have had to play defensively every turn, not really know if he was going to die or not, not really be able to pin realistic on any certain cards, but... Now, I mean, he's got the heal, he's got double Moltens, but he actually used up the Taunter, so he did still play quite defensively. Uh, but he's going to have a much better kind of guess of what Realistic might be holding. Yeah, and Arnie has a really great hand to follow this up as well, uh, with Hellfire, Molten Giant, and Healbot. Um... Well, and Shadowflame. I mean, I guess his whole hand is just pretty great at dealing with this because he'll be able to uh, find ways to clear the board, plus drop big threats, and then heal himself back up out of range with a lot of the bursts. So, uh, Irony looks to be in a pretty good spot after getting that ooze off on the on the Doomhammer. Yeah, he basically just needs to find out which line is going to let him best end the game. Which not only includes being defensive, but also lethaling your opponent as fast as possible. You kind of have to view it as, if I reduce the time my opponent's alive by one turn, that's one less turn he can top deck me. So, instead of trying to play as defensively as possible, maybe it's better to maybe like play 8-8s as soon as possible. 
and start hitting your opponent in the face. Yeah. The face is the place. The face is generally the place in Hearthstone. Even handlocks are starting to go face more more often than not nowadays. Well, if you think about handlock, I mean, from the beginning, it's kind of been a very aggressive deck. Like, you try to play an 8-8 eight eight on turn 4, and from then on you try and hit the face, because what are they going to do? Hit the face back, and then you play Molten Giants? Like, yeah. It's a pretty, pretty great deck at going face. Mm -hmm. So, how much damage is this? We've got 14. This is actually a, uh, a spell power totem for lethal. And it's a 1 and 3. Oh, nope. he missed it. I think he identified it, though, because he went for that hero power pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, still has 14 available, but you kind of have to think about this and be like, I wonder if Irony like played a little too offensively. It wasn't even that offensive, either. It's just a Sylvanas. Uh, only 5 power. That really doesn't clock your opponent that fast. But it's uh, it's still like a calculated risk, because you realize that you... I mean, what else was he going to do that turn? Right. He could have cleared the board, but the board wasn't that threatening. He was like 8 damage, and then he would yeah. do nothing else that turn. So Yeah, Realistic would easily be able to reload the board with the, the Spider Tank and the Fire Guard Destroyer. So here comes the Earth Shock, and this is when Realistic's going to try and push through this damage. Uh, it, it's a little unfortunate that he had to go for the Totem. I mean, it was correct to go for the Totem first, but he can't develop that Spider Tank. So now this kind of opens the floodgates for Irony. However, he cannot clear the board and heal bot, which is a huge issue. He no, to... but, I mean, he has a lot of power on the board. Um, yeah. He can... Oh, play... yeah, he did He did silence the Watcher, so he Yeah, so he gets that extra attack with that, so he can take extra damage off the board, play double right. and bring himself back up to 16, which is actually right. pretty good total yeah. health. Yeah, I think he can clear the board, sort of. I mean, he can clear the board enough to the point where he sets up lethal for next turn, uh, especially with the, the Shadow Flame and Hellfire, and be basically at no risk of death. Yeah. Yeah, I think you you can leave... Okay, he's going to kill off the 5-6. This only removes two extra power, but it removes seven of your power. I guess he still has lethal obviously, with the, the Giants out there. So just plays extra safe, playing around maybe like a Crackle top deck. Um, pretty good stuff. It's going to work out really well, I think. A uh, little bittersweet spell power totem there for realistic. One turn too late. I went from a 1-4 and four to a 1-3, though, so... The odds well, it, no, it, it, was a, it was a 1-3 and three last turn. He had the Searing totem out. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh. Well, then, I guess, yeah, it is bittersweet. Yeah, Irony killed off the Searing Totem with his Argus last turn. And now you... <laughs> like Defensive play. Players. Oh, man. With double <laughs> lightning bolt in your hand, do you... Uh, well, he's one off now, I think, right? 16, yeah, he's one off. So now you, you just lightning bolt the face, I think. I don't know, though, but then how do you win? What top deck gets you there? What top deck does eight? Really nothing. Like Ragnaros, if yeah. he played that. But yeah, this this has to be what Realistic goes for. Um, he can't play around anything. Yeah, hope one damage sticks on the board and then crackle the face. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Yeah, but that is going to do it with the Hellfire. So Irony is actually going to take the series here. 3-1 to one over Realistic. And getting that quick 2-0 lead, giving himself three opportunities to win with the Handlock. Uh, ended up being a huge deal for him, so uh, Irony's going to continue his run. He'll be playing in the finals uh, coming up in a little bit. Realistic, unfortunately, he doesn't have a chance to win uh, since this, this is the continuation of the open bracket from yesterday, so it is single elimination, but he will compete in the third place match. He'll have a chance to compete for $50 uh, and some some extra uh, Geico points as well. We didn't get to see the Druid, but... Um, but it's a Druid deck. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's got those wild gifts. Yeah. You and just the, know it. Mm -hmm. Druid is one of those classes that hasn't changed in a while. So uh, that Shaman deck, though, uh, did you, do you think that realistic... Uh, I mean, obviously he made it this far, but um, what are your thoughts on this The sort of... I guess we didn't really see if it was faster. Was it the faster one? 
Judging it by the cards that he had. to be the faster one, yeah. I mean, we didn't see any late-game bombs like Dr. Boom, Rag, or Fire Elemental, and we did see Double Fire Guard Destroyer, so I would say it's the, the fast one. Yeah, Lightning Bolt as well. Um, I think the slower one usually runs the more expensive burn, like Crackle and Lava Burst, which I think the faster yeah. one runs as well, but they yeah. run the... faster one just runs all the burn. Yeah. Well, Irony is going to move on to the finals. He'll face the winner between Oskaka and LBYS. So... Uh, That'll be the finals later on. Those guys will compete for a spot in the feature tournament, um, which will have a chance for them to win even more money. So during the break, guys, make sure you head over to geico.onog.gg. Uh, you can enter in to win an official TSM PC. You can also get a Geico quote. Of course, uh, it really helps Geico out to see uh, how many people are interested in, in their esports endeavors. Uh, it allows them to gauge that, and hopefully they'll they'll partner with, with more companies in the future to do more esports-related stuff. Uh, also, you can head over to liquidheart.com if you want to participate in the Opens. Uh, the next NA qualifier is actually tomorrow. So if you guys want your shot to compete in these uh, qualifiers or in the feature tournaments or have your chance to go to the Grand Finals at PAX, make sure you head over to uh, liquidheart.com on the right side under upcoming events. Uh, you can compete in the qualifiers. I'm going to try and play tomorrow because I don't oh. want to go to PAX. Okay. Maybe Ch maybe I'll convince Chucky to play as well. So if you want to play against us, you can do that. I'm a little busy tomorrow, but... N nope, got, you're not. Got that Archon League going on, so... Nope. Doesn't matter. The Summer Circuit is, is more important. The Summer Circuit's where it's at, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we are going to go to a quick commercial break, but the next match between LBYS and Oskaka will continue right after this break. 